What up, YouTube? Big Lou, Big Louie's Coach Review back again with another little tutorial slash review. That's right. We're going to be reviewing a product and doing a tutorial on a product at the same time. Now, in this video, I do multiple camera angles and we do this in live. Like, we do it literally like we don't speed up. There's one part of the video I'm actually going to speed up. So I'm going to speed it up four times. But for the majority of the video, we're doing it in live time. I, mean, I got like three or four different camera angles that I'm working with. Super up close, like extremely up close, and then overview, and so forth and so forth. Now, what we're doing in this video is we're simply just going to be doing... Um, a build and we're going to be doing a fused clapton build a standard two wire stainless steel wrapped in 38 gauge i'm pretty sure it's nichrome 80 yes 38 gauge nichrome 80 wire we're going to just do a standard fused clapton to me doing a standard fused clapton is like doing a space caterpillar reptilian crazy like some insane coil build to me that's what doing a fused clapton is to me Considering I've never even clapped in of, of standard clapped in wire. I've never done it. Okay. So with that being said, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to do a fuse clapped in two wire, 24 gauge stainless steel will be the core wire. And I'm going to pre straighten. I'm going to grab a length of stainless steel, 24 gauge, straighten it myself with the drill and a wrench. Most of you people out there, I'm sure you know how to do that. I don't really need to show you how to do that. So once you straighten out your 24 gauge wire, you cut it to the length that you want for as long as you want your coil to be. And then you just, I'm going to show you how to put the coil jig together and everything. But for now, I just want to show you the contents of the box. Okay. Now I've already opened it and I have been using it. And this is what it looks like, uh, or I'm sorry, this is what it looks like on the top of the box. Now, I didn't see any tutorials on this, but I did see this on Heaven Gifts, and I wanted to buy it. So I picked it up at Heaven Gifts. Um, I have a 15% off coupon code at Heaven Gifts for it. So if you're interested in picking it up, you can pick it up at Heaven's Gifts, and I'll give you the coupon code. It'll be down in the description, okay? Now, once you open up this box, you'll see that this comes with not only a coil jig, but it also comes with the drill. I think that's awesome. They give you a drill and it runs on two 18650 batteries. Okay, so you got this little lid on the back, open it up, and there's your two 18650s. They run in series mode. Okay, so you have to be aware of the pluses and minuses in there. You got a directional button. One is in reverse, two is forward, okay? On this side, you got a little spinning wheel, which is basically like a potentiometer, but it just controls the revolutions per minute. The higher you go up, the faster it goes, and you can slow it down as well. And shut it off. There you go. So it also clicks by shutting off. Or you could put it on the zero on the center. So one would be reverse, two would be forward, and zero would be off. Or like pause okay now as far as the device itself it comes with this it comes with two springs that are used for tension on the on the spool that's going to be clapping the wire okay comes with also a female hex nut as well so you have a female nut all right comes with a c clamp if in the event you're going to use these other things they got these other things that people use manually so if you are used to doing your coils manually it comes with extra parts that you could do it manually or for a longer distance of wire okay now i'm lazy therefore that's why i got this because i don't have time to do everything manually i just set it up start it with this setup and then i let it work all on its own and you will be surprised the wire comes out amazing okay now Working with this this uh, Clapton tool set, you'll notice as you're spinning your wire that the that the coil itself, the actual length of coiled wire that you're making, there'll be tw it'll have a little twist to it. The wire will actually be twisted. I'll show you how to get the twist out just by using this device. Some people use like tweezers that have like delrin on them they use delrin tweezers some people use that and they sit there and they bend it and twist it themselves and that's fine you could do that 
But with this tool, I'm going to show you how to do it without having to use the tweezers, okay? And still accomplish getting anywhere from 6 to 12 inches worth of really nice fuse clapped in coil, okay? Just if you're going to do this, just remember your Ohm's Law and the type of gauges of wire that you're using. The one that I'm using, I'm using two two core wires of 24 gauge stainless steel which is very low resistant wire and then i'm wrapping it in 38 gauge nichrome 80 which is a very very thin small thin gauge of wire which it can be broken you know if you put a little too much tension on the wire it will snap so just be careful on what you're doing be aware of your ohm's law you don't need to do 24 gauge stainless steel cores you could do 24 gauge cantal cores and then your resistance will go up higher because it's a higher resistant wire so let's uh let's set this up see what we're doing all right let's just get into it so to begin the process what we're going to do is we're going to take our coil jig then we're going to get some wire we got some nichrome 80 38 gauge we have 500 feet of it slam it down onto the bolt of the jig then at this point we're going to carefully take the wire and thread it through the top eyelet, the very small top eyelet of the coil jig. Pull it through carefully and place your jig down on a flat surface. Once you're on the flat surface and it's down, take the wire, pull it back, put a little tension on it, and now we're going to apply the spring. Spring goes right on top of the bolt, and now we're going to take the female nut, place it on top, you don't want to wrench this down. You don't want it on there super tight. Just give it a little tension so that when you pull on the wire, it doesn't instantly move fast. It just has a little tension to it. You don't need super tension, just a slight amount of tension because you have to keep in mind the wire is very thin and it can break if there's too much tension. Now at this point, we're going to thread our core wire. We're using 24 gauge stainless steel, and I had previously straightened it out on a drill. What I'm doing here is I'm inserting it into the middle hole, and I'm threading it through the back hole of the jig. Now basically, you just got to place your jig down, pull your core wires as just a good amount of distance back, and now you want to take your wrapping wire, and you want to wrap it around the core wire the same direction your drill is going to be spinning as when it's threading on the wire around your core wire. Once you have it all bunched up and it seems like it's on there snugly, you want to take that wire and feed it into the drill chuck, and then you want to hold the back end of the drill chuck and then tighten the actual chuck up itself. Do it nice and firmly because you don't want the outer wire to run loose. So here we are up close and you can see that the wire is already wrapped around the core wire one loop. We're going to start the drill and we're going to start it very, very slow. Very slow. You just want it to start wrapping around the core. You don't have to go, you know, wrap once and go right into super fast speed. Just kind of gradually get there. You know, you got the, you got the potentiometer on the drill where you could just you know lower the the velocity or you can increase it on there just slowly turn the wheel up little by little and you'll notice that the wrap is just perfect and this is normal real-time speed I wanted to be able to give you guys an overhead view as well. So I had cameras set up everywhere basically for this video. Right there you can see I got my stubby spinner by Rotablade. That thing can spin for like five minutes. Now this is real time folks. This isn't some other bullshit this is just real time and it all goes by itself it works on its own
it's like spinning silk it's crazy how how fast and how accurate this device works another cool feature of the jig is that they give you a little window just so you can see when you're reaching the end of your core wire so you know when to prepare to stop the drill from moving still Now at this point you'll notice that the wire has got some twists in it. And the way to back out these twists is you simply cut the wire at the end by the jig, remove your jig, and then grab a pair of needle nose pliers and firmly hold down the end of the wire. But make sure your chuck is tightened as tight as possible and go back to holding the wire firmly and spin the drill slowly in the reverse direction which in this one is number one I'm slowly turning and you can see the twist coming out of the wire little by little I only do this because I want the wire to be completely flat so now we got a nice flat wire as you can see, the wire comes out flawless. Let's start wrapping it up. I'm going to wrap it maybe four or five times. Let me tell you, these coils, they fucking rip, okay? Doesn't mean I'm not going to be buying anybody else's coils out there or representing anybody's coils out there. But, you know, for the times that I don't have coils that are pre-made by somebody else, at least I know I could make them myself and not really exercise that much trouble at all. It doesn't take you that much trouble to really make it. Once you just set up the wires and the jig, you just hit the button and gradually make it go faster and it just starts making coils which i think is great you know and for the person out there who doesn't mind spending like 70 or 80 bucks on something uh, i think with my coupon code you save 15 percent off on it so if you're spending 70 or 80 bucks on a device you know you'll save something you'll you'll definitely save some money there but for the person who doesn't want to buy coils out there from somebody and you don't mind getting spools of wire and and very thin gauges of uh, Nichrome 80 or Canthol or whatever, and you want to do the coil builds yourself, or you want to use some sort of stepping stool to get you to like an expert coil level building skills, this device is like perfect for it. I've seen a lot of coil jig devices. I've seen people use clothing pins that they modified themselves to do coil builds, and that's fine. People who do whatever the hell they want to do, you know. Um, you know, back in the day, I would use, I would attempt, I would use these Beetalon, um, 
they, they were meant for like, you know, ribbon and string and so forth. But I put them on my spools and I feed the wire through. And you could use this on like 38 gauge and 36 wire and do it manually and have it just have that tension just from this beetle on. These things work great for it, you know. And most times you could just, you don't even need to hold it. Once you got it going, it'll just go on its own with the beetle on as well. But if you want a very simple, easy, no nonsense way of doing it, this setup is great. You have the drill, you have the jig, you put your spool on there and you feed your wires through, it holds it nice and nice and level. And the, and the the biggest the biggest pain in the ass that you have really is when the wire twists up on you. If the wire twists up on you, then you just got to back it in reverse, hold one end, back it in reverse, and that's it. But this is the easiest possible way for anybody to do this cuz I know I've tried doing one wire Clapton's one core with just a Clapton, and I could not do it. I couldn't do it by hand, but now I'm doing two wire fuse Clapton's? That's just insanity. If I can do it, you can do it. Trust me, because I suck at doing coil builds. That's for sure. I can do super sub ohm builds. They're sloppy. You know, the coils don't sit pretty, but they ramp up nice. They cook nice. And on this build, this fucking thing rips. I mean, look at that. That's just beautiful. I got my um, my Armageddon Manufacturing Apocalypse RDA sitting on top of my broadside mod. And this thing's chucking. Just incredible. So if you're looking to do something and learn... And whatever the case may be... It doesn't matter if you don't even know how to wrap coils. You know? It's just... If you want to get into doing Clapton coil builds and so forth, this is the best tool out there to help you do it. I can't find a better device, an easier device, a more no-nonsense device. And that's it. That's all I got for you people. And that's it. So hopefully this tutorial was helpful. And trust me, if I can do it, you can definitely do it. And that's, that's the most honest fucking thing in the world I could tell anybody. Because I suck at doing coil builds. So if I can do it, and it comes out flawless looking, you could fucking do it. And you, these, those fucking coils will rip like fucking crazy, let me tell you. So, you know, just do it smart. Don't do super sub ohming like me. Do it however you want. But for me to YouTube, peace out. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful. If it isn't, just give me a thumbs down. Peace. Laters.